Now it's time to add an LED to your circuit. This time we're going to put the LED in the breadboard. Drag the LED out and rotate it 90 degrees. You'll see that when you hover it over the breadboard, it will snap into place and the legs of the LED will line up with the breadboard holes. Optionally, you can click on the LED and use the drop down menu to change it to a different color. Next, add a resistor to your circuit. Remember that the resistor prevents too much current from flowing through the LED so it doesn't burn out. Rotate the resistor 90 degrees and then put it in the same row as the short leg of the LED or the cathode and then put the other end of the resistor in the negative bus. This time, we'll need to change the value of the resistor. Click on the resistor and change its value to 220 ohms. Type 220 in this text box and then use the drop down menu to change the units from kilo ohms to ohms. This symbol, the capital Greek letter omega, is the symbol we use for ohms, the unit to measure resistance. Now, add a wire from Arduino digital pin 13 to the same row as the long leg of the LED or the anode. Again, you can route the wire to make your circuit neater and color code it if you choose. For example, here, I'm going to make it the same color as the LED. Now you're ready to control the LED with the Arduino. Click the code button, then click the drop down menu that says blocks and change it to text. Click continue in the confirmation that pops up. This will switch the code to a text editor instead of blocks. The default code has two parts or functions. The setup function only runs once at the beginning of the program. It uses the pin mode command to tell the Arduino to set pin 13, the one we have connected to our LED, as an output. The loop function repeats forever. It uses the digital write command to tell the Arduino to set pin 13 high or turn it on, wait for 1000 milliseconds or one second, then use the digital write command to set pin 13 low or turn it off. Then it waits for another second and repeats. This will have the effect of blinking the LED so it's on for one second, then off for one second. You can see this by clicking the Start Simulation button. When you click it, the LED should blink on and off. Note that when the simulation is running, you cannot edit parts in the circuit or change the code. Click the Stop Simulation button if you need to edit your circuit. You can see this by clicking the Start Simulation button. When you click it, the LED should blink on and off. Note that when the simulation is running, you cannot edit parts in the circuit or change the code. Click the Stop Simulation button if you need to edit your circuit. If your LED does not blink when you click Start Simulation, then carefully double check your breadboard wiring. For example, if you look closely here, you'll see that I have the resistor in the wrong row. It's not connected to the LED, so I have an open circuit. To make the LED blink, I need to move the resistor so it's in the same row as the LED. Here's another example of incorrect wiring. Both legs of the LED are in the same row. This creates a short circuit since both sides of the LED are connected to each other. So when I run the simulation, the LED will not light up. Make sure the legs of your LED are in different rows. Finally, if your LED blinks but looks very dim, double check the value of your resistor. Make sure you have the units set to ohms and not kilo ohms.